Welcome back to Savage Beauty Podcast. This is your host, Savannah, and this is a bonus episode, so surprise! Um, I know it's super exciting. I just wanted this to kind of be my last episode um, in 2018 before all the holidays and the craziness happens, and also because I'm on call for jury duty, I don't know what the rest of my year is going to look like, (laughs) so that sucks, but it is what it is. We have to do our civil duties, you guys. Um, so this episode is going to be very industry related. Um, I really want the focus of this podcast as a whole to be for everyone. Anyone who's interested in beauty, anyone who's interested in fashion, anyone who's interested in the industry that I'm in, I really want this to be geared towards you guys. Anyone who's interested in makeup, um, doesn't even matter if you're a makeup artist or not. I just want this to be for everyone. So, I am not always going to post episodes that are for everyone, though. Um, Specific episodes might just be geared towards makeup artists or people who are looking to get into doing what I do as a makeup artist, which is editorial and beauty and fashion in the industry. I would like for everyone to listen to this episode. However, I know if you're not into those things, you probably won't like it. With that being said, I really hope you listen to it and gain some knowledge from this episode. If you are looking to become a makeup artist professionally or if you are a professional makeup artist and you just want to kind of expand your knowledge of makeup artistry, if you will. So editorial makeup, you guys, it's a realm of its own when it comes to makeup. So we have everyday makeup, we have event makeup, we have glam makeup, we have natural makeup, but editorial makeup is just so different and this whole um, episode is going to be geared towards that. First and foremost, I want to talk about the difference between everyday makeup, event makeup, and editorial. Um, Maybe not specifically the difference, but I just want to give you kind of a basic rundown of what each of those is. I will literally record two separate episodes on each of those looks. However, right now I just want to give a basic, like, what are these? Because they are not comparable to editorial. So, I want you to understand the difference first before I get into what editorial makeup is. So, let's start with everyday makeup. That's something that's for everyone. Anyone who wears makeup or enjoys makeup knows that everyday makeup is completely different than um, glam makeup or editorial makeup. And actually, maybe you don't know that. So, I'm going to take that back. Not everybody knows these things because I do catch models all the time just wearing their everyday makeup to a photo shoot and then that causes the photographer to have to over edit so always hire a makeup artist (laughs) one and two this episode will probably help models out as far as understanding what you should put on your face for a photo shoot um anyways so everyday makeup is makeup that you wear every day very self-explanatory It doesn't have to be foolproof, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be photo ready, it can just be some tinted moisturizer, highlighter, maybe concealer if you want concealer, and some brows and mascara. Like, super simple, doesn't need much effort, um, doesn't need to take you an hour to two hours to do, and it's just something for everyone. Everyday makeup can also be full glam. It's totally up to you however you want to wear your makeup. Um, Everyday makeup can be uh, drugstore makeup. It can be high-end makeup. It can be, you know, like I said, tinted moisturizers. It can be uh, foundations with SPF in them. A lot of people don't know this, but SPF does contain titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which often causes flashback in photos. Um, 
and that's not something you have to worry about on a day-to-day basis with everyday makeup because you're not under professional lighting and getting professional photos taken when you're wearing everyday makeup or you shouldn't be at least now when it comes to everyday makeup it's something that should be quick you don't have to like wear it to impress anybody it's literally just something like you're going to the doctor's office or whatever running errands and you just want to put something on to walk out the door like that's my view of everyday makeup um of course if you're going to work and you work somewhere that needs a little more than just a few things on your face then obviously your everyday makeup is going to be different from somebody else's like a stay-at-home mom so there's that. We'll get into all of that in a different episode, but that's everyday makeup basic um, knowledge. <laughs> now, event makeup is a little different than that as well. Event makeup is usually full glam. Um, and when I say full glam, I mean like, actually, no. Let me just retract that because there is a difference between glam and full glam. And... <laughs> I just learned this from Lindsay Ambrosio, Makeup Madam. She is my, one of my best friends and my mentor, but I just like feel she's so knowledgeable. Anyways, she told me that glam is just, you know, basically a full face and, you know, maybe a smoky eye or something sultry and sexy and like full glam is what you would do on a fitness model, <laughs> which is like very full coverage makeup, very contoured, very highlighted, very um, smoky, very cut crease, glitter, full glam lashes, like no natural looking stuff. It it doesn't look natural. So event makeup is kind of a variation of glamour and um, full glam, which I mean, if you follow celebrities, you've seen them walk the red carpet. Full, you know, Glam is going to be like a red lip, maybe a cat eye, like something more than what you do on the day-to-day basis and something foolproof. So, you know, if you're going to event nine times out of ten, you're going to be getting photographed or you're going to be um, needing it to last longer than your average day. You're going to need it to not be creasy or you need it to be a little smudge proof. So we're going to use a little bit different products for event makeup than an everyday look as well. Anyways, with that being said, um, let's jump into editorial makeup. So what is editorial makeup? I get this question a lot and because I am an artist that does specifically editorial makeup, I will tell you. Um, Defined editorial makeup is often makeup that usually tells a story Um, or it's makeup that is ideal for, uh, avant-garde, high fashion, natural, agency test shoots, magazine spreads, beauty shots. Editorial is just a range of everything, but specifically done in a way that is for professional photography. So, editorial makeup could look like everyday makeup. It could look like a natural everyday wear. However, the products that I'm using are completely different than the products that I'm using every day. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. So, there's just a lot of important factors when it comes to editorial makeup. I'm going to say this first and foremost. Skin is key. Skin is a huge factor when it comes to editorial makeup. Nine times out of ten, photographers don't want to have to retouch the model's skin other than, like, getting rid of a few blemishes or, like, some crease under their eye. Because, let's be honest, not everybody is perfect and sometimes we have creasing and, you know, makeup isn't always going to get rid of your wrinkles and your fine lines, okay? Okay. If anything, it's going to make them more prominent. So yes, photographers do not mind retouching a few blemishes here and there, a few fine lines and wrinkles, but they do not want to have to smooth the skin completely. They do not want to have to get rid of um, extra shine or like extra contour 
So just knowing your limit on product application and where to place product is key. So skin is going to play a huge role in that because if your model comes in with acneic skin, um, bags under her eyes like she didn't sleep the night before, very dry, you're going to have to do a lot more work prepping her skin for that shoot. Um, that way the photographer doesn't have to retouch all that, you know? It's very... It's very inconsiderate, in my opinion, as a makeup artist, for the photographer to have to do all that work. Okay, the photographer is there to shoot your vision, or to shoot their vision, or whoever's vision it is. That's what the photographer is there for. The photographer is there to capture everything that was thought up of. Your job as a makeup artist is to create the look and to make it look flawless as much as you can. So what I mean by skin is key is you want to let your models know that they need to prep their skin prior to the shoot. Ideally, the week leading up to the shoot, you want them to really cleanse, exfoliate, um, maybe get a facial, make sure they're masking, I would even say starting two weeks prior to the shoot because if they have a breakout from the facial, um, it's important to let that heal before the shoot. So two weeks prior, just, you know, hey, we're doing a shoot. Let's um, make sure your skin is really good for the shoot. So making sure you're cleansing on a daily basis, moisturizing on a daily basis, um, exfoliating every other day or whenever your esthetician or dermatologist has told you to exfoliate. Maybe if, you know, it's a very, very, like, important editorial shoot. Not that all shoots are not important, but there's some that are just a little more important than others. Um, especially when you're doing, like, beauty headshots. I think when you're doing up-close photos like that, it's very important for the model to know, like, hey, I should go get a facial. Um, you just want the skin to look flawless leading up to the shoot. That way when you get to the shoot and you're going to do their makeup, you have less covering to do and you can use less product. And I'm not saying that to save you money. I'm not saying that to be selfish. I'm saying that because less is more. <laughs> you want the skin to look like skin in most of your editorial shoots. You don't want it to really look full coverage or cakey or... Unless that's the look you're going for, which I highly doubt, then you really want to make sure that the skin looks like skin. Um, <clears throat> so, it's just super important as a model for you to understand where the makeup artist is coming from when it comes to your skin. You know, we're not telling you to cleanse your skin and take care of your skin to be mean. We're telling you to do this so that it makes both of our jobs easier and the photographer's job easier and that everything just kind of runs smoothly the day of. And as a makeup artist, you need to take control of that and take the lead and make sure you're letting your models know to take care of their skin two weeks prior. It's super important. Not everybody takes care of their skin and as an esthetician and a makeup artist, I've seen it all. And I will tell you right now, my biggest pet peeve is when people come to the shoot with dirty skin or makeup on their skin already. When you come to a shoot, I want you to have fresh, clean skin, um, preferably with no other product on it. If you moisturize, that's fine. However, I, w I want you to cleanse before you come to the shoot, and that's it. Um, sometimes I'll have you do a hydrating mask. On the way there or before you come or even when you get there but other than that I just really want you to have fresh clean skin for me to work on so as an artist your job is to make the skin look like skin and I can't reiterate that enough when it comes to prepping the skin this is probably the most if not the only step that is super important <laughs> Because everything that you put on after that is, like, not as important as the skin prep. Um, 
skin prep is number one. And I know I just posted an episode about primers, so if you haven't listened to that, you need to pause this one and go listen to that one first and foremost so you can get a a better understanding of skin prep. Um, So skin prep for me as an artist is going to consist of a model coming with a cleansed face, like I said. Moisturizer is going to be your best friend because, especially in Colorado or in drier states, you know, Everyone's got a little bit of a flaky, um, brittle skin texture, and I don't, I don't want that to show in camera at all, because what that's going to do is it's going to cause the photographer to have to smooth the skin, and once the skin is smoothed, it doesn't look like skin anymore. It looks like plastic, and that's not the look that we're going for with editorials. Unless you're specifically doing a shoot where you want the skin to look like plastic, then girl, you better come up with a different way because skin smoothing just looks unnatural. So moisturizer is going to be your best friend. Any moisturizer that is good for all skin types is what you're going to want in your kit. Um, I use the Cetaphil Daily Sensitive um, moisturizer I get the travel size because it fits perfectly in my kit and also because I only use a little dot of it every time. I don't over moisturize um, because I, I use a lot of hydrating products on the skin prior to the foundation. So moisturizer and then hydrating sprays are going to be really good. Illuminating sprays are going to be really good. So you know e.l.f. has illuminating mists Um, you're going to want hydrating mist, rose water, anything with green tea to awaken the skin. Um, Mario Badescu has really great prep sprays and toning sprays. You're just going to want to load up on those and you're going to want to spray them all on the face. Like I don't even care how many sprays you do on the face of this but I want the skin to be as hydrated as possible, as plump as possible. I have invested in a nano mister. This is like my secret weapon. And I will load it with distilled water and prep spray or oil. And the reason I do this is to mist the skin and hydrate the skin but also I can use it throughout the whole entire makeup application and it doesn't ruin the makeup and it allows the skin to be plump and full and rejuvenated and very glowy and dewy and hydrated. That is my secret weapon and that is my top secret weapon. So if you listen to my podcast, you can go get a nano mister on Amazon for like 20 bucks and there you go. Don't tell anyone else. So those are going to be your secret weapons, the hydrating sprays, the rose water, the nano mister, and then you're going to want to do a mattifying primer, a pore filling primer, and honestly, just maybe a little bit of illuminating primer on the center of the forehead. Um, If they're dry or anywhere that they're dry, do a hydrating primer. So pore filling primer is going to go in those spots that we talked about in the previous episode. And if you didn't listen to it, like I said, pause this episode and go listen um, so you know what I'm talking about. So pore filler, mattifying primer, and then the illuminating primer as a spot treatment only because you are already putting so much hydration and moisture onto the skin. And if they're oily skin and they have acneic prone skin, you don't want to really overhydrate. So, um, just keeping it at a minimum, but also doing the most. So, con- contradicting yourself, like life itself. Um, and then maybe doing some color correcting. If they have a little redness to the skin, make sure you put those greens on there and really spot treat this because color correcting you don't want to do all over. Um, if they have a little bit of darkness under the eyes, making sure you put those peach or yellow tones under there to really conceal. It's going to help conceal. It's also going to help just create an even tone on the skin. 
you just really need the skin to be perfect before you apply foundation. So doing whatever it, it takes to do that is what you need to do. So follow my steps there. Doing the prep. It's super important. Again, you want the skin to look like skin. We don't want the skin to look like a Coca-Cola glass bottle. It's, no, that's not what we want. We want the skin to look like skin. (laughs) So, I use, for foundation, I use the Fenty Pro Filter Foundation. I really, really love this foundation. Um, I used to use MAC Studio Fix. This is also a great foundation. It is super thick and heavy, so a lot of the time I find that I need to shear it down or do medium coverage when I use it, Um, but I haven't used it in a really long time. So my go-to is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. It is not for everyone to work with. If you don't know how to work with it, I suggest not using it. Um, It took me about this whole year (laughs) since I purchased it to really figure out how it works. And um, when I start recording content for YouTube, I will kind of go through that because it is really hard to work with and a little bit goes a long way and it also dries super quickly. Also, if you have really dry skin, you don't want to use it unless you mix it with a moisturizer. So there's a few steps in there that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you everything in this episode, but, um, yeah, that's the foundation I use, but you can use whatever works for you as an artist and whatever you love to use as an artist. So I'll use that Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. Um, and really the foundation application is going to depend on what look you're going for and what the model's skin looks like prior to foundation application. So, if I'm going for a very natural, glowy, dewy look, and I just really want it to be a skin-focused shoot, um, if I'm doing an agency test shoot, which I do a lot, if I'm doing more natural, um, I'm going to go very light to medium with coverage. It's very rare that I do full coverage in general. Um, I usually do a lot of medium coverage with some spot um, treating and spot concealing, but I will very rarely do full coverage when it comes to editorial. I tend to do full coverage more so with events, but with editorial, I just, (laughs) here we go again, I want the skin to really show through and I want it to look like skin. So, you know, your skin isn't very cakey and, like, full and heavy looking. It's very plump and dewy and hydrated. So, I'm not going to do full coverage. I'm going to do light to medium coverage. And really depending on what look I'm doing, because, like I said, editorial can range anywhere from high fashion to natural. So, it just depends on what the actual look is. Um, If I'm going to be putting... Like, for example, if I'm going to be putting, like, a color on the cheeks instead of a contour. So, I did a shoe and it was all red, and I kind of used the contour and the red tones for the cheeks. Um, I kind of didn't really place a lot of foundation on the outer edges of the skin. I really kind of focused the foundation more so on the inner part of the skin where it needed the most coverage. So I used a brush for that, and then I took a beauty blender and kind of just like, without any product, blended the inner parts of the skin out. If that makes any sense to you. I know makeup artists, this will make sense to you, but um, the reason I did that is because I really wanted it to be medium coverage to sheer coverage. So I really wanted it to be medium where it needed coverage, like where there was blemishes, where there was dark circles, where I really needed to conceal, where there was redness, um, which was all really in the center of the face. Um, And then honestly, since I didn't want to use a whole lot of product on the outer edges of the face, I just kind of didn't want to add more product. So I just sheared out the product I had and kind of made it fade out to a softer coverage. 
Um, that's kind of just the look I tend to do when I don't want it to be heavy. So when you're doing foundation, you really don't want it to just sit on top of the skin. You really want it to melt into the skin or at least look like it's melted into the skin. So I've used a combo of, um, I just really used a combo of a brush and a beauty blender or a beauty sponge to really press the makeup into the skin. Um, I like this method a lot because, again, it makes the skin look like it's melted into the skin and then it creates that natural radiance in the skin that skin has and it really makes the skin look like skin. How many fucking times can I say skin in one sentence? Does anyone want to create a drinking game about it or like tally it up and let me know because I'm pretty sure it's been like 50 now. Anyways, <laughs> back to the topic. So when it comes to editorial makeup, I don't necessarily use a lot of product unless it's something that requires a lot of product, like I'm doing a high fashion um, and it needs to be super mattified, super contoured. When it comes to editorial like beauty headshots and I really want it to look like clean and blended and airbrushed, um, I'll tend to use a little tiny bit of setting powder and where I'm going to place the setting powder is specifically anywhere that needs to be set. So like T-zone, just very lightly, um, feathering it on with a small fluffy brush. I'll also do the same thing under the eyes. I don't want to bake under the eyes because I don't want it to look dry under the eyes. So I'll take a little bit of um, setting powder, translucent powder, and really softly put it under the eyes. And then, of course, anywhere that you had to spot conceal um, blemishes, scarring, redness, you're going to want to set that as well so the makeup underneath doesn't move. Um, as far as contouring goes, it just really, really, really depends on the look. Again, if I'm doing a more high fashion or like super shadowed look, then you're going to want to do a heavy contour. Nine times out of ten with an editorial look, you're going to do very soft bronze. You're not going to really contour a whole lot. Um, and when it comes to contour, again, I could create a whole episode, which I plan on doing. Um, it doesn't always have to be a cool tone. Contour is a shadow, so yes, a cool tone is ideal. However, sometimes a warm tone contour or a mauve tone contour is perfect. Art is whatever you make it to be, so if you want the look to be really warm, use a warm bronzing shade um, to do the contour, especially if you're doing a very soft look. When it comes to editorial, it's really what you guys create that, and that's why I really love editorial makeup because it's whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be held to any certain standard. So that's the best part of editorial makeup. Now, I will say with editorial, you don't want it to be a very harsh contour. So you you just really want to make it look soft and airbrush looking. You don't want it to look sharp. So with that being said, um, I'll do the contour, make it look really blended out, really, really airbrushed into the skin, melted in the skin. I'll take my, my contour brush and I'll blend it out that way. And then I'll also take the beauty blender and kind of blend on top of it without adding any new product and that just really presses it into the skin as well which is amazing and then you're going to want to do a little bit of blush if that's the look you're going for a little bit of blush goes a long way my favorite um contour lately to use is actually a bronzer by Marc Jacobs it's that giant omega bronzer the tantastic color oh my god I am in love with this bronzer you get so much product and a little bit goes a long way and it just looks super pretty on the skin on everyone's skin no matter what tone or type 
so I'll use that and then um, lately my go-to blushes have been NARS blushes and the reason why I really like them is because a lot of them have a little sheen in them and it just kind of looks more like a glow with from within um, and I just really love it so I'll do that um, and then I'll do highlighter highlighter is a big thing that a, a little bit goes a long way when it comes to editorial you definitely don't want to over highlight um, there is such thing as over highlighting when it comes to editorial and unless you're unless the look you're going for is like a wet look because I've done that before and even then a little bit goes a long way but there's just certain highlighters for that there's liquid highlighters and then cream highlighters but a lot of powder highlighter and a lot of layering of highlighter for an editorial shoot can make it look overexposed and too bright and then it, the photo doesn't look right so sometimes I notice I add a lot of highlighter and what I'll do because with highlighter it's easier to layer more than to take away however I do the method of veiling which is taking a little tiny tiny bit of translucent powder and kind of brushing it over everything on the face once it's done as far as um blush contour and highlighting go and that kind of just makes it look more airbrushed and melted into the skin as well but i also don't ever try to over highlight so you know just not using really chunky glittery highlights but very soft pressed um very finely milled highlights so makeup madam cosmetics she has highlighters that are my favorite my absolute favorite i have yet to find a dupe for them so go out and buy those they're really affordable but those are my favorite highlighters um, my second favorite would be the mac hyper real glow palette i've been using that a lot lately um the colors in it are just perfect on point for everything i've been needing as far as winter goes <laughs> And then Becca highlighters are really good as well. They're very finely milled, very um, pressed. I really like pressed highlighters um, and sometimes loose highlighters are really good too because they're so finely milled that a little bit of those goes a long way. Um, I really like the loose ones for wet looks. So you can get those. I really like to apply the highlighter either with a brush and then pressing a beauty blender on top of it without any product or sometimes it, if I want a very heavy highlight I'll just dip the beauty blender in the highlighter and just press it right onto the skin and it's life-changing but it just looks very melted into the skin so if you over highlight just take a little bit of that pressed um, not pressed <laughs> translucent powder or setting powder and just softly go over everything on the cheeks now the only way to tell if you've over highlighted is when you take a test shot with the photographer when they're testing the lighting just ask them how does the makeup look um did i over highlight did i over contour do i need to soften anything and let me tell you they will never ever ever be annoyed if you ask how the makeup looks this is something that I always do when it comes to editorial shoots. I always ask for feedback and I always, always, always look at the photos before the actual shoot begins. So I always look at the test photos to see um, how they're going to turn out and if I like the makeup. If there's something that I'm not happy with, I will gladly tell the photographer, look, I really need to fix this one thing. A photographer is never going to be mad at you for wanting to fix your work because they also want your work to be flawless and perfect so we're all on the same page here um when it comes to editorial makeup lately i've been super into using individual lashes the reason i like individual lashes for editorial is because they're customizable and they look super natural and there's not like a giant band strip um, across the eye that makes it look unnatural and when it comes to editorial if you're doing more of a natural look, individuals are the way to go. If you're doing more of a high fashion, um, avant-garde look, the lashes 
the lash situation is going to be completely different. So you choose whatever lashes you want. Now, even with a, an avant-garde and high fashion look, you want it to be pr- melted into the skin and airbrush looking. So just following all the same steps, really. Like, you can't go wrong. It doesn't even matter what colors you use or, you know, like if you really want a strong contour, even if you take that blending brush um, and beauty blender or beauty sponge and just press everything into the skin, it's just going to give you a flawless airbrush look every time. So there's that. Now, the other thing I'm going to say when it comes to editorial makeup is make sure everything is blended out. Unless you are wanting to do a harsh line, make sure everything is blended out, especially the eyebrows because, girl, I've zoomed in on some photos recently and the eyebrow (laughs) is literally just a square or a rectangle, like a 90 degree angle and it's not even blended out and that's not okay. So you just want everything to be perfect and blended. Um, Blending out brows is super easy, especially those front parts. The front parts of the brow, you really want to be soft unless you're going for like a completely filled in brow look for high fashion or avant-garde. Other than that, take your spoolie and blend that shit. I don't want to see any harsh lines on any editorial photos unless it is meant to be there. So there's that. Um, My other and probably last thing when it comes to editorial makeup is just the setting part of it, the setting sprays, the longevity of the makeup, and making sure that you're able to be at the shoot to really change the look if it needs to be changed. Um, When it comes to lips, that's really up to you. Um, With editorial makeup, you can go natural you can go color or you can go glossy you can't really go wrong with any lip um for editorial makeup there's not really a specific way to do lips for editorial so that's really up to your interpretation um so i'm not going to even get into that so with setting the skin there's a couple steps i do so after i have applied everything to the face i'll do the nano mister the Nano Mister, like I said, you can get off Amazon for 20 bucks. It's just the distilled water and the oil or the distilled water and prep spray. I'll do that for like 30 seconds on the skin. I'll wait for like a minute and then I'll do the hydrating spray. Then I'll do a mattifying spray if I need to. Um, and then I'll do Final Seal by Ben Nye. I literally have fallen in love with this product. I didn't even know it existed until I worked with Lindsay Ambrosio. She has taught me a lot of things when it comes to makeup, especially photo shoot makeup and event makeup. And Final Seal by Ben Nye is literally a staple that everyone who is a makeup artist needs to have in their kit. It does not cost that much. You can buy a giant jug of it or you can buy the little 16 ounce bottle of it or even the travel size of it. I like to buy the 16 ounce and then get my own little spray bottle and fill it with the final seal final seal is sticky so it kind of binds the makeup together and it's minty it literally smells like you're putting listerine all over your face everyone loves it i don't know why but i also noticed that once i started using it regularly on my editorial shoots that the skin just looked so good um I don't know what it is about Final Seal, but I do know that it has something to do with the mint and the stickiness of the product that allows the makeup to hold and not crease and just kind of like look flawless. I'm going to do more research on it, but like I promise you, since I started using it, I've noticed a huge difference, so it is worth it. You just need to get it. Well, that's everything I have for you with editorial makeup for now. Um, I could really talk about editorial shoots forever. However, I just wanted you guys to understand the basics of it. Editorial makeup is really whatever you want it to be as long as you follow a few steps that are huge. Um, Like I said, you don't want products that flash back, so making sure that your setting powders are not talc or silica based making sure that they're not white, making sure that they're finely milled, making sure that 
the foundation you use doesn't have talc or silica. It's just doing your research really as a makeup artist for ingredients that cause flashback versus ingredients that are good for photo shoot makeup. You know, a lot of the HD products um, contain ingredients that are not good for photography, which is weird as fuck because HD means high definition and you would think that that meant that it was great for photography. But um, I just find that blurring products, pore filling products, hydrating products, those are the things that are really good for editorial. And when it comes to editorial, the skin needs to look like skin in every aspect, no matter what style of editorial shoot you're doing. Whether it's beauty, whether it's high fashion, whether it's avant-garde, whether it's a natural look, whether it's a an agency test shoot, it just really needs to look like skin. So understanding the basics of editorial is going to allow you to go above and beyond and really expand on that. Rules are made to be broken, but there are a few that definitely, definitely need to be followed when it comes to makeup. There's a few staple ones that need to be followed, but the rest of them, fuck it, you can break all the rules and do you as a makeup artist. Okay, well, happy holidays, everyone. Happy 2018, and I will see you next year. I won't see you next year. I'll talk to you next year. That's what I'll do. All right, guys, I love you all, and thank you again for listening. the podcast you just heard was made using anchor ever thought about making your own podcast anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started it's a one-stop shop for recording hosting and distributing podcasts best of all it's a hundred percent free Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.